The hottest comic books in the world and at the list at number 10, it looks like a safe investment. And to think they've been doing these homages even back in the 70s. Number 10 on the list, we have Batman 227 from 1970, a classic, iconic Neil Adams cover, paying homage to Detective Comics 31. During our last vlog, I went comic hunting with the Golden Age Guru and Fire Guy Ryan, and Jeff specifically said he was not planning on spending any money. And when he found a raw copy of this book, he couldn't say no. And there's a lot of members looking at the prices right now saying, now is the time. The 4.5 selling for 450, it's up 17% when you compare it to the recent 12 month average. The 7.0 selling for 960, that's up 24%. And we even have a record breaking sale despite the adjustment period that we're currently in. It last sold for record March of this year for $1,500. It's up 13% with an all new high for the first time in comic book history for 1700. Definitely a safe investment, a key issue that's coveted regardless of what's going on in outside media, and every time it sells in high grade, it seems to break records. We got a CGC 9.2, which its last sale was its record high, selling for $2,833. The 9.4 is only down about $150 from its height of $4,200 that was set in 2022. The last sale for a 9.6 is the record high, selling for $8,400. And the 9.8, which there are only nine copies on the census, last sale is the record high for $42 grand. That 9.6 sale happened a month after the 9.4 this past August. So I suspect we're probably going to see price correction. And some members grabbing this book at the current price are probably getting it at the lowest it's going to be for quite some time. Definitely a book for the PC. No first appearances, just a Neil Adams key. What do you guys think in the comments section? Is this a good investment or not? Utilize Kotom 101 on the best comic app in existence. I use Key Collector Comics every single day. When I first started collecting comics seriously, back in the day, I'd have to rely on blogs and various forms like the CGC board to learn about Hellboy comics and which Mignola covers I wanted to buy. Now I can use the character search to learn about Big Red and new comics that are coming out, as well as the artist search to get refreshed on what Mignola's been up to. Utilize that code, support the show, and enhance your comic collecting. Moving on to number nine on the list, another book from 1970. We've got Conan the Barbarian, issue number one, the first appearance of Conan and the first cameo of King Cole. This book is getting to a point where it's too low. You know, it's too respected to sell for what it's going for. And that's because there's probably a lot of uncertainty about its value long term. But this seems like such a safe book. And what's it going to take for it to blow up? I want to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Because... Jason Momoa couldn't do it, but we do have Red Sonja inbound, and we're getting a lot of positive press about that. But there is one other thing that we should consider. Yeah, the fact that Arnold has expressed interest in reprising his role as Conan. Imagine we got an old man Conan type of sequel. That would be dope. But what's it going to take for this book to spike? I mean, I don't think it's the 4K box set that's coming out. It's only 50 bucks, but it does look pretty badass. Let's take a look at the numbers because two different 7.5s outsold their 12-month average, the highest being for $500, which is an increase by 16%. The 8.0 did the same thing. Two copies outsold the average with the highest coming in at 675 for an increase of 23%. Then we have an 8.5 that sold less than that 8.0 gem just reported on for 646. And that's still an increase of 6% when you compare it to the recent 12 month average. This book is only going to get so low and it seems like a safe investment. And considering we're in this adjustment period at the what has been traditionally the lowest point of the year for comic sales, some members are going to buy books despite the market's conditions. And it looks like we're seeing these safe investments moving this week. And speaking of Red Sonia, I got to give a shout out to Sai. Show. They just dropped an amazing premium format. I'm not even a Red Sonja fan, but it's got me wanting to pre-order. This next book, although it's on the hot list this week, I think is cold. In fact, I think a member overpaid, which is why this book be trending. At the list, at number eight, we have Doctor Strange number one from 1974. The first solo title, Doctor Strange, after it was renamed from Strange Tales, which continued to issue number 169. And we're continuing to see the trend of the first solo titles making the list, but not the first appearance, which leads me to believe that collectors are going more for that safe bet and not spending thousands and thousands on those first appearances. And I think Tom's right. I think we have two collectors that just bought this book because they wanted a Doctor Strange number one. The 5.5 selling for 130, no big deal, but it is 53% above its 12 month average. Same with the 7.5, averaging about $113. Someone snagged it up for 150, but I do think somebody overpaid for this 9.8. People haven't paid this much money for this book since January of this year. In fact, there was a low sale of $1,100 on this 9.8. The sale prior 
to this $2,600 sale was $1,778, and the sale after was $1,726. I think someone accidentally paid $1,000 more than they should have, which also has spiked this book on our list this week. Yeah, so it technically made the hot 10 list because of these three sales, but it doesn't seem like this book is too hot. No new news on Doctor Strange, although we do know that Doctor Strange 3 should be an adaptation of the Jonathan Hickman Avengers Time Runs Out storyline. We know that that connects to the Secret Wars in the comics. It would make sense that it would connect to the Avengers Secret Wars that we're going to see in coming years. Well, at the list at number seven, I think we have what can be defined as a PC book. We have Moon Knight number one, the first appearance of Khonshu, Bushman, as well as the origin of Moon Knight with a classic Bill S. cover that hit heights of $1,300. And members are grabbing this for between two and $300 right now at a 9.8. This book is so cheap and so dope that some people are probably seeing the hype in the comics and being reminded by videos like ours that some books are just awesome to own and now's the time to grab it. It's a Moon Knight double key and everything from 8.5 to 9.4 just sold for under $100. Then we have the newsstand CGC 9.8, which just sold for $500, which is 13% above average. That's great, right? Well, not really when you consider that its all-time high was $21.50 and the direct market counterpart isn't faring well either. That had a high sale of $1,350 in November of 2021, the height of the comic boom. Last sale for just $300 last month. Although we're all hoping for a season two of Moon Knight and nothing's confirmed, if Loki season two, which is a beloved series on Disney Plus, isn't spiking comics, why would we think this would be any different? Which is why I think people are buying this book now because they want to add it to their PC. Marvel did recently drop their new trailer for Vengeance of the Moon Knight, the new ongoing series which will be written by Jed McKay. And I got to say from the trailer, it looks pretty dope. You definitely don't want to miss out on our November mystery mail call box. You got under five days to get yourself a Spider-Boy number one Tyler Kirkham trade dress cover first solo ongoing series as well as a Bjorn Berens Swamp Thing number one homage to the classic Bernie Wrightson key first appearance of Alec Holland in trade dress link in the description. We have a monthly membership option. You can try us out with a one time purchase and we are officially open for international buyers. Hold on, wait a minute. You're telling me that you can get a Silver Age 9.0 key issue, the first appearance of an Avenger for under 800? Hot damn. At the list in number six, Avengers 57, the first appearance of the Vision, which hasn't spiked since we've last seen him. And that was way back in WandaVision days. And since then, we were supposed to get a bunch of like spinoffs from the very successful show. What happened to Vision Quest? It's being all roped into what's being called children's crusade which is removing the focus from wanda and the vision and focusing in on what is likely going to be the young avengers are they just giving up on this character and not only is this book the first appearance of vision but the second appearance of ultron making it a double key we had that cgc 9.0 we were talking about selling for 800 this month where its all-time high was for 2800 in september of 2022 the 9.0 and 9.2 both have their year low sales. The 9.2 just sold for $13.25. The heights it reached was $3,000 back in 2021. Between a 3.5 and a 6.0, we're seeing between 5 and 20% increase compared over the last 12 months. But the book is down so much that I can't help but think that of Silver Age key major appearances, this one just seems like a safe bet at these prices. Yeah, definitely a great time to buy in, but it might not be such a great time to buy number five on the list. We have G.I. Joe, a real American hero, issue number one. Yo, I am like on the fence with that statement, Jem. You know, seeing nine eights hit $800 and members, some of them, getting them closer to the $600 marker, I definitely think 800 seems steep when we're at this point of the year with the only real major comic book hype happening is the Energon universe. Stay tuned because this book is spiking because of it, but there's another one on the list that's spiking because of what Robert Kirkman's got cooking. But see, that's what makes these videos so great. You gotta know what a book is selling for so you know not to overspend. When a book is hot, it's usually a bad time to buy it. But if you know 9.8s are selling for 850, you might be able to pick one up for 700 at a convention. And considering this book hit near $5,000, granted, there's a major increase in CGC census count. I think that there's so much room on there on a book that largely gets purchased for people's PC that it feels, again, like a safe bet. And with the little hype that there is, when you compare it to the whole scope of Q4 as it pertains to what's being published right now, 
It makes sense to me why members are buying this book. The 6.0 is up 6%. The newsstand 7.5 is up 19%. And the newsstand 8.0 just sold for $140, 13% above average. 9.2 is up 4%. 9.4 is up 35%. The 9.6 you can get for $300 to $330. That was the heights this week for an increase of 10%. Just wait till Joshua Williamson comes out with Duke One and we read Cobra Commander. These books have the chance of uplifting so many G.I. Joe collectibles that although are down royally, 9.6 has hit $1,100, comic fam. 300 bucks seems like such a good deal despite what's happening in the comic game. Moving on to number four on the list, we have Spawn number one. Now, Todd McFarlane did print about a million copies of these. There are 11,000 9.8s on the census right now. But Tom and I were just talking. Imagine what happens to this book once that trailer drops. Imagine when we see that cape for the first time. It could be a damn concept. This right here is a book that although you can get for under 200 bucks and may seem steep for how plentiful it is, when that trailer hits... People are going to want more than one copy just in case. So let's take a look at what it's selling for right now. A CGC 8.5 selling for $45, up 5%. The 9.2 was up 7%. There were six 9.4s that outperformed its average this week, the highest coming in at just $84. Same with the 9.6. We had three copies outdo the average, the highest there being 115 the newsstand 9.6 hit 308 for an increase of 39%. And we saw three different 9.8s outsell their 12-month average, the highest being $180. That's an increase of 9%. But, you know, this book hit heights of like near $500 at a 9.8. So, yeah, it's down by more than half, closer to 60%. But wait for that trailer. Because when that happens, people are going to be wishing they grabbed this book for under 200 bucks. And even though we're reporting on that $180 sale, another collector got one for just $138 this week. It just goes to show you, you got to know what it's going for so you can be a savvy buyer. Plus, Jason Blum is reeling in the dough from Five Nights at Freddy's, which is making me more confident on what he's going to do with Spawn. As people prepare for the holidays, it becomes pretty slow between the months of October and November. But some members are going to still put money down on what feels like a safe bet. At the list at number three, more of the Energon universe. We have Transformers issue number one. This came out in 1984. It's the first appearance of the Autobots, the Decepticons. And with nine eights hitting the $1,400, $1,500 marker right now, seems like a safe bet. And it's got two things going for it. You got the Energon universe in comics and the shared universe that they're building on screen. We got an 8.5 selling for 125, 12% above average. The 9.0 is 6% up. Then we got the newsstand 9.2 selling for $230, 30% above its 12 month. The 9.6 you can get for $350. That's an increase of 9%. The 9.8 sold for $1,460. That's an increase of 1%. This book has been selling for between $1,300 and $1,500 all year. Some members were patient and were able to scoop one up for like $1,200. But over the last 29 9.8 sales that have taken place in 2023, 27 of which have exceeded the $1,300 mark, many hovering in the $1,400 to $1,500 marker all year long. So this right here is very different than G.I. Joe because some members are scooping it for way under price. This one, it's going to be tough to secure that much cheaper than what it's going for, which is why I think people are saying, you know what, $1,400, why not? And keep in mind, this book saw heights of over $3,000 during the comic boom. We got a recent sale on a CGC 9.8 newsstand selling for $2,649, 2% above average. But check this out. This book does not come up for sale often. There's only been 18 sales since 2017 where it saw heights of $4,000. Don't miss out on both of our drops that we did this week. Spider-Gwen Annual Number 1, a virgin foil Raph Gersetti. That book is only 20 bucks and it's available right now on Comic Tom 101.store. And this past Wednesday... We dropped pre-sales for Secret Wars Battle World number one, a beautiful painted cover by Felipe Mesafera. No, I was blown away when I saw you guys post this one over on Instagram. I love the original cover for Secret Wars 1, classic George Perez. I love the Alex Ross homage, and I feel like Felipe Mesafera really captured that spirit. Great looking variant in both Virgin and Trade Dress. Take a look at that freaking corner box. We're going classic with it. Also available on ComicTom101.store. Yo, sometimes hot books get so pricey that it kind of turns you off to wanting to buy it. You may want to wait. But what you should be thinking about is what is going to follow suit next. And at the list of number two, we have a 
brand new comic that we have never seen make the hot list. Yeah, that's right, man. We've had Uncanny X-Men 130, the first appearance of Dazzler, on the list for I don't know how many weeks. And I don't want to say that this is the next best thing. Like, that book is unobtainable, so we're going for the Dazzler number one. I just think that this is untapped potential. I mean, look at the prices of this book. A 9.2 went for 75 bucks, 79% above its average. The 9.4, similar in price, selling for 79, putting it 76% above its 12 month. And then we have the 9.8, which came in at just $277, and that's 40% up. It makes sense why we're seeing record-breaking sales this week in this book. A 9.0 just hit 80 bucks, an increase of 10%. The 9.6 sold for 150. That's also an increase of 10%. Because the only MCU spec has been Deadpool 3, Wolverine, Deadpool. It was going to be in the movie. Is Taylor Swift going to be Dazzler? It is understandable why the safest investment as it pertains to the hottest keys are the ones that are the ones being most talked about, but also why this book is replacing issue 130 because it's so affordable. It seems like a safe bet. And for those very same reasons, we have a brand new number one on the list, the hottest comic book in the world. Make sure to hit that like, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We're here every single week and back on the list after a one week break, we've got Wolverine issue number one, the first solo series for Logan. An increase of 14 copies graded at a 9.8 in under two weeks. This right here shows the supply going up and members still betting on the first solo series, Frank Miller cover. The newsstand 7.0 is up 10%. The 8.0 newsstand is up 19%. The direct 8.5 is up 2%. The 9.0 is up 1%. These are maintaining price despite an increase in census count. The 9.2 had to catch up a little bit. It just sold for $180, which puts it 16% above average. But then you have the same trend that 9.4 is maintaining. The 9.6, however, is up 20%. And the 9.8 just sold for $725 for an increase of 8% over its 12-month average. When this book was hitting $550, $600 this year, we said that this seemed too low. Now it's creeping up past the $700 marker, despite the last sale being literally at 700 is this the time to buy this book do you think we're going to see any more lows as we come out of the adjustment period that we're in we got to know your thoughts and as always geek responsibly and stay minty fresh enough said